Hello everybody, this is Leslie Pelch at the Vermont Center for Geographic Information. I want to welcome you to our webinar, I should say our rescheduled webinar. Um, thank you to those of you who had previously signed up for the webinar and were kind enough to me not to uh, chastise me for not really being prepared for it earlier this week. Um, and I will say that we're all going to be a lot better off for my having put this off a little bit because I got some help from some census staff people and uh, they helped me actually get a much better handle on what I wanted to show today and how to do it. So I want to say thank you to Michael Horgan who is on this webinar and who passed me along to his colleague David Craker, both of them from Census Bureau, uh, for giving me some additional information to help me do what we're going to do today. Thank you very much to you guys. So um, hopefully everybody who's showing up has shown up by now. We had a couple extra minutes. And um, we're going to start out today. Hopefully you can see my screen and it says how to participate today. We'll do this very quick overview of how the, the GoToWebinar interface works and then we'll move on to the actual webinar. So the first thing is to notice this little orange button that allows you to open and close your uh, panel, your GoToWebinar panel. And so if you find that the panel is in the way and you don't want to look at it, you can just click on that little button to make it go away or to make it collapse over to the right and then you click on it again in order to make the panel open back up. Within that panel, if you're having any issues with audio, make sure to open up your audio section and uh, set your audio mode to the appropriate um, method of hearing. And if you want to use telephone, remember that you can open up that audio setup. There's a little link that says audio setup. Don't use the phone number that's on the screen right here. Use the one that's actually in your audio panel if you want to switch to telephone for some reason or if you weren't sure where to find the telephone number to call. Um, you are all muted, by the way, so you don't need to worry about any sound going on in your background. It does, nobody else can hear it. Um, if you have questions at any time during the webinar, you can go ahead and type them into the question box. So again, opening up these little panel sections is just clicking on the plus sign so that it's a minus sign that it's open. Um, type in your question. It'll come to me. You don't have to worry about it interrupting me because it's just a text question and I can choose to look at them when I feel like it. Um, I may wait until the end to answer most of the questions, but I might glance at them every so often to see what they're looking like, make sure I'm not just forgetting something. Um, so for the most part, they'll be uh, answered at the end. I want to point out that we are recording the webinar and it will be posted at VCGI's YouTube page and I'll show you in a once we're on, looking at our website, I'll show you how to find that. Um, but you'll also get an email that will have a link. I think the link goes to the YouTube page. And uh, so you'll be able to view that when I post it, which probably won't be today, but probably early next week I'll get it posted. Um, all right. I think the only other thing I want to do is ask everybody to click on this button on your GoToWebinar panel. It's a little orange hand with a green arrow on it, the hand raising button. That just reassures me that you can all hear me and also that you're kind of understanding how to use your panel and your buttons. Great. Thank you very much to everybody who's clicking on that. Okay. That's all we need to do for overview unless anyone has questions which you can type in and send to me. Um, we are going to move right on over to oops, VCGI's website, although we're not going to stay here. So what I'm going to do today, give you a little outline, which I didn't type up, so you don't have to look at it. You just have to listen to me. What I'm going to do today is go to the census webpage, American Fact Finder, which is one of the many ways, actually, that you can get at census data. I'm going to choose just to use this because um, from my point of view, since VCGI is making available a fair amount of the census data, and we'll see that in a few minutes, um, the Fact Finder page allows you to get at some more of the data, uh, some other data that's available that we chose not to include in the um, Vermont census data that we're making available on our website. This allows you to access that, download it in a tabular form, and then you'll be able to join that data that information to the existing data at the VCGI website. Um, David Craker, who helped me out with this, also pointed out that there's a way to uh, access the same data and download a shapefile and your data of interest at the same time. 
and I'll talk about that and in particular why that might be of interest because he made a really good point about um, about why that's of interest even though BCG already has shapefile data. So the first thing I did is come to this website. All you need to know is the factfinder2.census.gov or if you just go to the census webpage and search around a little bit you'll find links to FactFinder. You can always do a Google search on FactFinder2 or FactFinder. I think it always leads you to FactFinder2 which is just the newer version. And then if you end up anywhere else just click on the main button to come back to its main page. Scroll down just a bit to what we provide I'm again going to choose to focus just on the decennial census. There's some other data here and and perhaps in the future we'll do another either webinar or presentation at a roundtable or something about some of the other data and how to access and use it. I don't know that much about, for instance, the American Community Survey. Um, I think there's things you need to understand about the other data that uh, are important before you start using them and since I don't know them I'm not going to get into that. So decennial census, obviously 2010 census is the most recent, and I just clicked on get data. Let me just do that one more time. So what we provide, decennial census, and I'm clicking on get data. So you come to this interface, and the key thing to keep in mind is that this is the interface where you're going to narrow down what it is that you want. You're going to give it some information so that you only end up with the tables that you want rather than the thousands and thousands of tables that are here. So the first thing I did was say I was interested in the decennial census. I'm going to click on this topics box over on the left to narrow this down a little bit more. And the first thing I'm going to do is tell it I'm really only interested in 2010 data today. So I clicked on year and then 2010 and you can see that my selections are being put over in this box on the left and that um, those are being used to narrow down my, my options below. I'm also going to go up to people, basic count, and um, I hope this is obvious but I'm just going through an example. This is one particular table of data that I'm choosing to get into um, and to be honest I picked it by looking at the data that we already included in, in our data that's posted at VCGI, and again, we'll look at that in a moment, um, and realize that, that there's a lot of data already there. There wasn't that much available for 2010 that isn't there. There is some, obviously, data that's not available. So I went in here and I thought, well, I want to get something that we don't already have in our data so that I can demonstrate. This is actually why you would want to do this, is to get additional information that's not in the VCGI data. So one of the things I noticed was household size. So people basic count estimate household and family. So we've narrowed it down to that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is click on geography. So this is where I tell it what, what geographic extent I'm interested in. I'm going to leave this default most requested geographic types. I'm going to click on select geographic type and then county subdivision. Um, when we look at what's available at VCGI, you'll see that there are a variety of options here as well. Uh, we chose to offer the census data in a number of different geographies, including including county, county subdivision, census tract, and track uh, uh, block, census block. And county subdivision in this case, if you're not familiar with census data, the important thing to know is that county subdivision is the equivalent of towns, and by towns I'm talking about the town boundaries that you see in our town boundary data layer. There's a lot of different definitions of towns, villages, all sorts of things that people think of. I'm always talking about our town boundary data layer. That's in my mind what town means, and that is the equivalent of county subdivision. So I'm going to pick county subdivision. I could have picked county if I wanted that. I'm going to pick our state. And then we can skip right over select a county, unless of course you were doing this and you were really were only interested in one county. I'm interested in the whole state, so I'm going to pick all county subdivisions in Vermont. And then finally, add to your selections. And then I'm going to close this box, the selections box. So you can see this reflects what I've chosen, how I've chosen to narrow down our options. And now I can look down at my search results table. 
and see what's here. And this is what I was going for, average household size by age. Be careful to check over in the data set area. If for some reason you forgot to say you were only interested in 2010, you'd find that the first data sets were all uh, from the 2000 census. So be careful not to pick those unless that's what you want, obviously. But when I was doing this earlier in practicing, I was realizing that I was starting to pick things that were from 2000 census. And I need to go down a little bit farther to find the 2010. And then also some of these are uh, specific to certain groups. So you can see that this um, second listing for average household size by age is actually for American Indian and Alaska Native. So this very first one listed is the one I want, average household size by age. And all I have to do is actually just click on that name of that table and it will open up the table. So there's my table. And to be honest, today, for this demonstration, I'm not even interested in the age breakdown. I really just want average household size. And you can see that it's by town. Each town and its county is listed across top here. And if I want to look at all of them, I just have to click over to the right a little bit. Okay, so they're all in there. If all I wanted to do was look at the data in tabular form, I'm done. If what I want to do is make a map, I've got a couple of different options. I'm going to digress briefly because this isn't actually what I want to do today, but I want to digress to show you this option. And you can see that create a map is an option just above the table. Once you click on create a map, it reminds you that you create that map by actually clicking on a data value. To some extent, well no, this isn't true. I was going to say it doesn't matter which data value. What I really mean is it doesn't matter which town you click on. Since I've chosen a geography that's the whole state broken into county subdivisions, that it is going to show me the whole state and all of the county subdivisions. Um, I think what matters is which uh, attribute essentially I'm clicking on. And I'm interested in total household size for av average household size for each town. So I'm just going to click on one of those. All right, so it creates it and then it says, all right, now you can click on show map. It takes a few seconds for this to load. And there's a map. So again, if this is all you want, it's just a reference, a visual reference, like, oh, okay, now I can look at this and get a quick idea of house, average household size distribution across the state. Um, so that's nice and it shows you the... the uh, table of contents over here. But if what I really wanted at this point was, yeah, but I want to download this data so I can make it and tweak my own map. When I'm in the map view, if I click on download, I get some of the same options that we'll see in a second in the uh, regular table view download. But the additional option is obviously the spatial data format, which means I can download a shape file. Something to keep in mind is that when you download this shape file, the um, the data, as it says here, includes the data used to create the map, but that data is in CSV format, same as we're going to do over in the table view. So what you're downloading is the shape file that does indeed show the geographies that you're interested in here, and additionally, not included in that, um, the CSV file that contains the data. And in this case, because what I chose to look at was the total, not the breakdown by age, but just the total, um, average household size for each town, each county subdivision. Um, that's all that's going to appear in that in that table. That's the only attribute that will appear in the table. Whereas when we download the table view, we'll actually get the age breakdown as well. So that's just something to know about what you're downloading. And if you do this, I think you still have to do the transformation that I'm going to show you in Excel in order to turn the CSV into an Excel file. Um, it's possible you actually don't have to do it, so we might try both. So if I wanted to do this, I would go ahead and click OK, and it would make me a shape, a zip file, actually, with shapefile and um, the CSV in it. And I would just go ahead and save it into my census folder. So here's my census webinar. Here's the zip file that I just downloaded. Put it right in there. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, so we'll come back to that a little bit later. So let's go back to our table view because since I already have shapefiles 
of these geographies. I, I don't actually need that. And um, since all we were looking at is the state of Vermont, and I know my shape files match the state of Vermont, the thing I wanted to point out about that map view actually is, um, or d rather downloading those shape files, if what you are interested in cross state lines, this might be a much easier way. As, as David was pointing out to me, if you were looking at the whole uh, Champlain Basin watershed, something like that, you know, the area around Lake Champlain, and you wanted data from both Vermont and New York, you would be able to define your geographies and pick out exactly what you wanted, which might include the counties in uh, New York plus Vermont, and include all of those in this selection and then go to the map and download the shape files that covered that whole area. So I think this is of particular interest, the map view and downloading data from map view, if what you're looking at crosses uh, political boundaries in a way that makes it a little bit harder for you to get the shape files for that data. Okay, so here's our table view and this download looks very similar. What we're interested in right now is the comma delimited format, the CSV. I'm going to go ahead and say include descriptive data elements in the names just because that way when we first download it and open it, we'll be able to tell what stuff is. We don't want presentation ready formats because remember we're, at least at this moment in my case, uh, downloading this data in order to join it to, to um, shapefile data. We're not downloading it to create a presentation that we're going to hand out. And go through the same saving process. and open everything back up again and it's got a different name, that's good, so I have to remember this is 7 oh. <sighs> why don't I just I'm going to delete this one And we'll do that one a little bit later. It's always how it is. I always do it perfectly when I'm practicing. Oh, did I just lose it again? Ah, I always do it perfectly when I'm practicing and then I do one little difference. And it take a little bit longer. Okay. So the first thing I do when I'm ready to actually deal with this data, I've, I've uh, moved, copied the zip file over to my folder where I want it to be. And now I need to unzip it. I'm going to let it go ahead and create. So all I did was right click, extract all, uh, let it do the default thing that it does, which is just create a folder with that same name. In that folder, I now can find my CSV file. A little bit more information in here if you want to. There's a little description of what this is, the readme file, the text file rather. Okay, so I'm going to open up the CSV file, opens in Excel. Um, the first thing you're going to realize if you've done anything with Excel spreadsheets and GIS is that we can't have both of these uh, headers up at the top, so we're going to get rid of one of those. And I think from my point of view, I'm getting rid of this one since these, unless you have a reason to want to save the original um, uh, field names, attribute names, which are these codes, um, they're not actually that helpful. So I'm just going to delete that row. And the other thing that we need to do is just, and I just sort of am changing the names of these attributes to something short, but that I hopefully will be able to remember what it means. But it's still cryptic <laughs> because that's what I do. So I'm going to do average, household, size, total. And then if I care about these other ones, I might change them to average household size um, under 18, oops, and average household size 18 and over. All right. 
So there I'm just giving them some names that make sense to me. Um, the most important, the, the two most important bits of information in here are ID2, because this is actually the, um, the identification number that we're going to link to our GIS data. So that is something to note down if you're taking notes. It's, it's the most important thing in here, other than, obviously, whatever the actual data is that you want to map. I'm interested in average household size total. Um, you can see they do also have the name of uh, what you're looking at, but it's in a format that you're not going to use to link anything because it has commas in it. So. But it's nice. It's helpful information. So um, the one thing about this this field of ID numbers is that because it is in number format or general format, um, we actually need to change this to a text format in order for the linking, the joining to work in ArcGIS. So the first thing I'm going to do is save this file oops, as an Excel file. So we're going from CSV to Excel. I'm going to give it a better name. Just make sure I'm in the right place. And I am. Maybe I'll just put it right out here in Census Webinar. So I'm going to just call this average household size. And once it's an Excel spreadsheet, we are also going to go, so I just clicked from the Home tab over to the Data tab. And over here in the Data Tools area, we're going to click on Text to Columns. And I'm just going to go through, this is, by the way, the section that David Craker shared with me that I was struggling to remember how to do earlier in the week. And uh, so thank you to him for doing a uh, PowerPoint slideshow that shows these steps. Delimited, leave that. Click Next, change Tab to Other, and put S in there. Click Next. Click Change Column Data Format from General to Text. Click Finish. Oops, <laughs> there was another key part of that, obviously. Highlight the whole column. Do that one more time, get a chance to repeat. So this first uh, thing that pops up when I click on text to columns, we leave default, click next. No, oh, it's already set the way I set it. That's good. We're changing from whatever the default was to other and type S in this box. Changing from general to text and then finish. So you do get a little bit of uh, uh, visual confirmation of what you did in terms of the way text and numbers show up in Excel uh, cells. So you can see that that has indeed been changed to text. So let me just close this up. Say yes. And now we're going to go over to VCGI's web page. I think I'm going to pause just to make sure I don't see any questions or nobody's either lost or needing me to, to re-explain anything yet. So I'm going to go over to VCGI's website. All right, so we got the first half of our, our goal done, which is to get some census data that's not available at the VCGI website. So where is this reputed census data, you might ask? Um, at our new website, similar to our old website in many ways, you click on the Data and Imagery button over in the navigation bar on the left to get into the data warehouse. I'm just going to type census into the keyword search. By the way, the keyword search and the theme search are not connected in any way. You don't need to fill out both. What it says over here doesn't matter if you're using the keyword search. They're just two separate little search engines. You can see that we've got a bunch of options here. Notice the years are in the title. Uh, the, the geography is also in the title. You can see that for 2010, we have block group block, county, county subdivision, and track. So what I'm interested in is county subdivision 2010. And before we actually download the data, I just want to go into the metadata a little bit. 
so we click I clicked on the green button with the question mark in it, the more info button. And next um, you can see that there's a certain amount of information here. But I'm going to click on full metadata and take a look at this data because it's worth noticing what attribute information is already in here, especially since I was the one who managed to pull all this together and put it uh, attach the attributes. So um, when we're in the metadata, if you scroll down just a little bit to data structure and attribute information, and you'll see attributes of the name of the, the uh, file. Lots of attributes, many of which probably aren't that important to you. A lot of these ones up front are just not that relevant to most people. One that is going to be of interest is the GeoID 10. This is the attribute that we're going to link on, we're going to join. It's going to match the, the ID 2. Um, and then if you scroll past all these attributes that have sort of acronyms and they're somewhat meaningful names, we get to the ones that are relatively meaningless to us if we're just looking at them, you know, P00301. But if you click on them, you will see definitions. So if you're interested in seeing what we have, you just have to open these up and take a look at them. And you can see that a number of, initially what we have is total population. There's a bunch of race attributes, and then we start getting into um, sex and age. And actually notice that the code actually does give you a little bit of information. The P refers to people, so or population actually, lots of population um, attributes, and then it changes still in the age and then oh, maybe it is people actually um, we get down to all right so this is the one um, this is another attribute that I'm going to use in, when I make my map so p0 13 is median age and then it, that gets broken down by gender and then we get into household oh I have average households oh well I thought I was picking out one that I didn't have, but I do have it. Um, family, family stuff, group quarters, and then finally the H's start getting into housing questions, specifically housing units, urban, rural, occupied, vacant, and once we're down here, renter, and then seasonal. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that um, the metadata does define all these different attributes, and if you use the data, you're going to see all these, these codes for the attribute names, which are meaningless, and we just chose to keep the original code names and, um, and allow people to look at the metadata to figure that out. All right, so that's the metadata. Now that I know for sure that that's what I want, I'm going to go ahead and find it again. Demo Census County Subdivisions 2010 and download the shapefile. It comes zipped, so I'm going to go through the same steps as I did with the uh, census data from the census website. Move this over into my folder and then extract it. Okay, and we can go in there and you can see that there's shapefile and um, metadata. Alright, so now we have all the data we need to make a map. So I'm going to demonstrate this in ArcMap. I don't think, well, I suppose there's a chance I could have uh, time to um, bring in that other data. We can try that. Uh, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring in the VCGI data. And I, it's not that important in this particular exercise, but I do want to do it that way for a reason, which is that it's Vermont State Plain data, so that I know that I'm telling my my uh, project that it is going to be in Vermont State Plain. 
coordinate system. Not that relevant in this case because we're not bringing in too much other data. So there's um, the county subdivisions, fairly familiar, familiar map to most of you, I'm sure. And if we open up the attribute table, you can see all those attributes that we were just looking at in the metadata up here. Okay. But we are interested in adding some new and different data. All right, so there's our Excel spreadsheet that we made. Um, remember, we started with this CSV file. We opened that up in Excel. We changed it a little bit, and then we saved it as an Excel spreadsheet, which is right here. So I'm going to add this to my, and then we have to choose the, the table within. So I'm adding that to my project, and in order to join the attribute data from this Excel spreadsheet to the shape file, I just right click on the name of the layer, go into joins and relates, join. The first thing I have to choose is the field in the layer that I just clicked on, which is the demo cow sub 2010, my, my shape file. Choose the field in here that I'm going to join on. And remember I mentioned that GOID 10 is the one that we're using to join. It is guessing because there aren't any other options really, the other table that we're going to use to um, to try to join. So it's already got that filled in. If you had multiple things going on here, you'd need to be careful to pick the correct table. And it's also showing us what the options are for within that table what fields exist that we could possibly join to. And remember, we're going to pick ID 2. If we want, we could validate the join. Looks good. Just say OK. OK. And now we can, nothing happens, <laughs> as you can see. That's. As you all know, that's sometimes a good thing. Um, uh, but we can confirm that the join happened by just going into the attribute table, scrolling over a bit to see if, oops, to see if we see some new attributes. So these are the attributes, ID1, ID2, geography, and remember these, these um, attributes that we named, A, I named, A, H, 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 S, T, blah, blah. And you can see that there are a few null values in here, and we will see that on the map as well. Those are just, um, those are towns that didn't have any uh, records in the table that we were joining. But now we can symbolize this map using that data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to symbolize the household size. Actually, I'm going to symbolize the median age. So I'm going to go into quantities. I'm going to use graduated colors. And I'm going to, this is where I pick which field I want it to look at in order to symbolize. And nope, I'm going to have to do, so 13001, PO 13001. This is the median age for each town, or each county subdivision. And apply that. You can see there's the median age. And obviously, based on this color ramp, the lighter colors are lower median age, the darker colors are higher median age. I'm also going to take advantage of the graduated symbols option with our average household size. So you can see that it's automatically um, creating a, uh, a series of symbols, different sizes for different values for this average household size. Oh, oh, that's right. 
sorry, I have to add them twice. <laughs> um, so, and the way that I can actually do that is by adding in Sorry. All right. So what I need to do is I'm adding my my census, uh, my county sub, my town boundaries layer twice. So that one time I'm going to use it to symbolize the um, the household size, and one time the other instance of it I'm going to use to symbolize the um, median age. So let me just do this one more time. Median age. 1301. Okay, there we go. That's what I was going for. So this way we can show two different attributes in there uh, together, do a little visual analysis. And I found this interesting because when I first did the average household size and noticed how much higher the average household size was, which remember is being symbolized by the size of these circles. So the bigger circles, there's a lot of them in Chittenden County, Addison County, kind of more up in the northwest, they're bigger for the most part. Um, and there's a real reduction in the size in the central part of the state, up in the northeast a little bit. And I wondered why that was. And I suddenly thought, oh, I wonder if it's because there's a lot of older people, therefore smaller household sizes usually, in these more rural areas. And indeed, that, that in some sense, at least to, to some degree, that is the case. You can see that in the towns where the median age is higher. In many cases, the um, average household size is smaller. So there's my little analysis for the day. Um, so let's, I don't know if I should, I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing, which is go back and uh, download that shape file from the census website and just show bringing that in. It's basically the same process, um, which is to say it's going to give you a shapefile that is essentially this same shapefile. It's going to show these boundaries, and it's going to give you the CSV file that you can join to it um, as a way to get that data visualized in your ArcGIS or your other mapping program. Um, but let's just very quickly go through that. So if we go back to FactBinder, back to the map, And then I'm just going to download the shape file. So there's there's my shape file. And Move that over into my census folder. All right, so thematic map shape dot zip is the one that I just created and downloaded. I'm going to extract that. And you can see we have a shape file in here, and we also have the CSV file. So this is the um, this is the data that created that little map we were looking at, and as you can see, it just has a much longer geo ID because this actually includes um, the the numbers that indicate that it's the U.S. and then and then this latter part of the number is the same as what we were looking at with ID two, in that it's uh, the 50 for Vermont and then the remaining numbers for the county and town, uh, and then this is the data value. Which so you'll notice that this doesn't have all that nice descriptive information about what the data value is. Say, so you have to be careful if you happen to be downloading a bunch of different um, data to be clear, perhaps when you name it what it is. So in this case, this is average household size. So I'm going to go ahead and save as 
and I'm not going to leave it called thematic data. I'm going to call it average household size, size from the map. I'm going to put map on there just so I remember that's where I got it. And um, and actually, the, the ID is already a text format. So I'm going to see, because it's got US in it, I suppose. So I'm going to see if that is enough, and we don't actually have to uh, do anything else there. All right, so we've got a shape, and we've got the data to join to it. So let's see if we can just pull it in. You know what? I'm going to open a new one. So we're going to go back here and find our thematic map shape folder. There's our shape. And interestingly, it does not include all of the towns. And I'm not sure. I forgot to point that out when we created our previous map. There isn't data for these towns. So that's why they're just kind of not included. These are, these are actually, you'll notice these are um, Buell's, some gores and unincorporated towns, I believe. At least some of them are. And then we're also going to add our spreadsheet that we just turned from a CSV to a spreadsheet. And let's look at our attribute table. So there's our geo ID. And if we look at this table, we also see GeoID, so let's see if they match up. Do my join. Thematic data, GeoID. Let's do a validation. Oh, it looks pretty good. So, as before, nothing seems to happen, but if we look at our attribute table again, we see data value. And that means, whoops. That means that we can symbolize it using that. So remember, this just has average household size, which is what data value stands for. So actually, we probably should have changed the name of that from data value to average household size. Um, but this does give us that information. There we go. So so again, remember, the reason I'm showing you this is is not so much that it's the best way to do it, for Vermont, I don't. I think you lose all the other attributes that we've already pulled together for you. But if you were doing needing to create a map that crossed political boundaries, this could be an extremely useful way to um, to pick out different geographies, not just Vermont, and uh, bring them together into. And you'd have one shape file that contained all those geographies. Well, it might be multiple shape files, but you'd be able to collect them all at one time and collect the same uh, census data and be able to connect that, link that. Okay, and I think that's actually all I wanted to show. So I'm going to encourage all of you to ask questions if you have any. And I'm going to take a look at any that might already be here. And yes, somebody had a question about the recording. Um, the recording will indeed be available probably early next week on our YouTube page, which that's the other thing I can show. Um, somebody asked about sharing the PowerPoint demo um, that David Craker gave me, so I will ask David about that. And if he's OK with that, I will um, indeed share that. If he's not, then I can probably recreate a part of it and, uh, and just share that part. Because actually, his whole PowerPoint covers a bunch of other aspects of accessing data from the Census website, which might be of interest to people, but it, it covers a lot of different things. So maybe while people are thinking about whether they have any questions, I will go ahead and go back to the VCGI website and just show you how to access um, the recorded and posted webinars. So uh, one option is to go to the events page, event archive, and especially if you know that or you suspect or you're wondering whether, I also posted other materials uh, besides just a link to 
the uh, recorded webinar. So if, if I can indeed post like a, an outline or a PowerPoint or maybe links to other resources, other things, uh, you would see those. Oh, look at that. I have not created the link for um, the emergency mapping. I need to, I need to update this a little bit. Uh, you can see we have the title of the webinar who did it, when, and then the recorded webinar posted at YouTube will take you right to the YouTube page. Any other materials will be posted below that. So that's one way to get to the YouTube page. All of these links just take you to the YouTube page. All of the ones that say the posted, the recorded webinar. Another option is right on the front page of our website, down in the bottom left of the navigation bar, it says connect with us. And then there's a little bar of links that take you to all different social media options and the one on the end is YouTube so this is our YouTube channel and you can see that we have a bunch of webinars posted a number of QGIS webinars tour of our new website which includes a fair amount of time spent downloading data if you have any questions about that um, lots of other things here you can you can uh, Actually, I can't even think what the words are, but you can follow our channel in some way so that you'll be notified when new things are posted. Um, okay, I think that's all I wanted to point out here. And then um, I do also want to point out the next webinar coming up, which is this No More Downloading webinar. It's about all the web map services that we're making available now, which is quite a bit more than just a few months ago. Um, we have... So here's the link to the webinar, but let me just show you on our website where you can link to more information about the web services. So in the data and imagery section, if you click on web services, you'll see there's a page about each of the different kinds of services. And these do include the URLs and links that allow you to use them. So if you're using ArcGIS 10 Plus, you can link directly. Otherwise, you can copy and paste the URLs that you'll be able to direct uh, your GIS software to those services. So if you're interested in learning more about what services are, how you can use them, um, how to use them, please do sign up for that webinar, which you can find uh, the information right on the front page. Second one listed right now. It'll be the first one listed after today. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. I hope everybody's not waiting for someone else to ask their question. I know this is fairly simple. I, uh, you know, I wanted to do this basically because I get questions about other census data occasionally, and um, and I wanted people to know that it's fairly easy. There's, you know, some steps involved, but it's pretty easy to uh, get that census data and link it to our existing data. So if anybody does have any additional questions, you can always reach me. My information is right here on the front page. If you click on my name, it's a link to my email. Um, you can always give me a call and and refresh your memory about anything we covered here or take a look at the recorded webinar. And also, please do, if you have time, uh, answer the very brief survey that you're going to get when you get out of the webinar. Uh, it's very helpful to us to know whether this is helpful to take uh, constructive criticism, and especially if you have ideas for future webinars. I would love to hear those. Always looking for ideas. Um, our webinar series for the winter is probably going to end pretty soon, if not next week, then early in April. Um, but we do it every winter, so we'll be doing more next year. So thank you very much, everybody, and I think I'm going to sign off. Have a good day.